Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts. No BS, just AE. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create this carousel of media that you're seeing now. But the meat of this episode is in the expression controls we'll be applying that will allow you to very easily manipulate the distance between this media, the speed and direction of the rotation, and the focal distance of the camera. Because of the way we'll be creating this, you can easily swap out logos, images, and videos. If you watch my channel, you know I'm all about saving time so you can focus on being creative. If you feel the same, you'll definitely want to stay tuned for this episode. We have a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a new comp. So we can either uh, command N or go to composition, new composition, or simply click this comp button right here. And we're gonna go 1920, 1080, 2997. And let's make this 10 seconds long and we'll call this media carousel. And let's add a shape layer. So right click in this area down here and choose new shape layer. And then we want to add a rectangle and a fill. And uh, we can just change this fill color to something a little bit darker. And as you may remember from one of my previous episodes, rectangle path sizes are in pixels, not in percentages. So we want this to be a perfect square, which it defaults to 100 by 100. Let's just make that 1000 by 1000. Okay, and then we're going to pre-compose this shape layer. So layer pre-compose and we'll call this media one. Okay, and then once we're inside of this pre-comp here, choose command K to bring up our comp settings. So let's make our comp size 1000 by 1000. Click OK, so that way it fits in there perfectly. Back out to our main comp here, Media Carousel. As you can see, our comp for Media 1 is up in our project panel. Let's duplicate that three times, so that way we have four Media pre-comps. And let's just change the color of these pre-comps, so that way we can differentiate one square from the next. So let's go to Media 2, and you can change this to any color you'd like. It's mainly for purposes of telling one square from the next as we go through this episode. So back out to our main pre-comp here. Let's drag in media two, three, and four underneath media one. And let's make all of these layers 3D. Okay, and now we need to add a new camera. It doesn't really matter what the settings are for this. And then we're going to add a new null object. And let's rename that camera controller. Highlight camera controller and camera one and just pick a color so that way you can set that aside from the other layers. Add one more null object and rename that rotation. And then we also need to make our rotation 3D. Okay, so let's change our view from active camera to top view. That way we can see everything that's going on here. And what we need to do is offset all of our pre-comps by 1000 pixels in every direction. So with all four of these layers highlighted, press P to bring it position. And we're gonna start going to the left, back, right, and forward. So with media one highlighted, let's take 960 minus 1000. And as you can see, this moves over to the left. And then for media two, we want this to go backwards. So we're gonna go onto our Z axis, type in 1000. And as you can see, that moves it back 1,000 pixels. Media 3 is going to go to the right. So on our x-axis, 1960, because 960 plus 1,000 is 1960. And then for media 4, go onto our z-axis. We're going to come back negative 1,000 pixels. Grab all of these pre-comps and just parent this to our rotation layer. Our values now are negative 1,000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1,000, 1,000, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1,000. So that makes it a lot easier as we're doing some of this math. Let's go to our rotation layer and hit R to bring up our rotation. And we want to rotate on our Y axis. So hold down Option and click Y rotation. And we're going to type in time times 50. So this is going to rotate our null object by a speed of 50. And you can increase this or decrease this however you like. And let's go back to our active camera to kind of see what the uh, effect will be. And as you can see, we're zoomed in pretty tight here. And that's because we moved this media four position to negative 1000. First, make sure that your camera is parented to the camera controller. And we want to make this layer 3D. And so hit P for position and we're going to pull out on the Z axis. Just that way we can kind of see how everything is situated. And that's close to what we want, but not exactly because we want all of these layers facing forward. So the way we do that is highlight media one and click R for rotation. Rotation, and we want to parent our Y rotation to the Y rotation of the rotation layer that has the script on it. And so let's open that up and we just need to add to the end of the script times negative one. What that does is it offsets the rotation of this layer right here, which is controlling media one, two, three, and four. And that's going to keep all of these media boxes facing forward. So now let's right click on Y rotation and just choose copy expression only. And then we can highlight media two, three, and four and just hit command V to paste it. If you hit EE, you can see how 
how all of those expressions were applied to these layers. So now if we watch it, we can see how all of our media boxes actually face forward. And this is going to be true no matter what the value of this time layer is, whether it's positive or negative. Let's just change this expression to negative 50. And as we can see, it moves in the opposite direction. So we could stop here and have a pretty cool little pre-comp, but we're not going to. We're going to add in some expressions that give us a lot more control to easily manipulate how this is going to animate. We're going to add a new adjustment layer, and we're going to call this Master Control. And with Master Control highlighted, let's go up to Effect, Expression Controls, and we're going to add a Slider Control. Let's rename this Slider Control Distance. So make sure that we lock down this effect control so that way we can click away and see we still have access to this expression here. Highlight media one through four, hit P to bring up our position. So we need to parent all the values other than zero to this slider control, meaning we need this negative 1000 to parent to the slider control, this 1000, this 1000, and this negative 1000. The way they are now, there's no way to really do that because if you pick whip this, it's going to link all of the position layers. So the way we get around that is right click on position and choose separate dimensions and see it gives you an X, Y, and Z position independently. So we're gonna do that with all of these. So now we can link the values that have 1000 or negative 1000 to our slider. So let's first take our X position here, it's negative 1000 and pick whip our slider control. Now, if we open up our expression, we can see that this is linking the X position up to master control distance. Well, let's go to the end of this expression and just type times negative one. And the reason why is because that's a negative value. Now for media two, our Z position is 1000. So we can just pick with that and not add anything else to that expression. Media three, our X position is 1000. Pick with that to the slider and that's fine. And then for media four, negative 1000 on the Z axis. And since it's a negative value, we need to add the expression times negative one. And as you can see, as we were doing that, Move all of our boxes back to a zero position. Let's highlight all of these, hit P, and everything is zeroed out. But what this slider is going to do, as we increase it, it's going to move them out an equal number of pixels. So if we go back to our top view, we can see how that is true. So as I scroll through, you can see how it's moving them all equidistant, which is exactly what we want. Let's go back to our active camera. Okay, so now we need to add another control. So with master control highlighted, let's go up to effect expression controls, slider control, or as you can see up here, slider control is already selected. And the reason why is because After Effects will bring up the last effect that you used. So we're just gonna hit slider control for this, rename this rotation. So let's open up our rotation layer, hit R for rotation. Now this is a very common simple expression, time times 50. What we're gonna do is pick whip this up to the slider for the rotation slider control. And as you see, we have this script now. Well, in order for it to have the same effect as a time expression, we just need to go to the very beginning of this layer and type time times. So this is saying is we're gonna use the time expression and it's going to use the value of whatever the slider number is. So right now it's set to zero, so it does doesn't move. Let's say if we set this back to 50, now it's going to move at a value of 50. You can also change this to a negative value. So negative 50 is going to go the opposite direction. So basically what we've done was we've created a very, very simple way to manipulate these media boxes with this master control. You have full control over the distance. You also have full control over the rotation, how fast and slow it goes. So we are almost done. So now let's go into our camera layer and let's open up the camera options and let's turn on our depth of field. The reason why is because I want whatever media is up front to be in focus and then knock these other ones out of focus. So that way it draws our eye to the media that's in the center. Right here we have one view. If we click two views horizontal, it'll open up another panel and it's our top view over here. And we need to look at the media that's in the front right here, which is our media four. So with depth of field turned on, let's just kind of start to move our focus distance. Do we want this focus distance to line up right on top of this media box here? Let's crank up our aperture, turn it up until these other boxes kind of start to go out of focus. You can see really clearly right here, let's go back to one view, how this is in focus and the other ones behind it are out of focus. Now, if we watch that, you can see how our focus stays right here in the center. And as these come in and go out, they get knocked out of focus. So if we go back to our two views and say we change our distance now to 800 and start to adjust our focus distance, you can see how now it's not lined up with that media. So how do we fix that? There's a way to link our camera focus to a script. And a good friend of mine, Mr. Dan Ross from Best Bytes Media, showed me an ingenious way to make this happen. So let's highlight master control and we're gonna lock that down. And we're gonna create a new null object. And let's just rename that 
camera focus. So if you highlight media four and hit EE to bring up your expressions, we want the one that's on the Z position right here, this master control distance slider negative one. Right click on that and copy expression. Go up to our null object or for camera focus. Make sure this is 3D as well. Command V to paste it. And if we hit EE, we'll see that that script has been added. This camera focus is now linked to this distance slider. So I'm gonna pull up two views. And as we see right now, our focus distance is in fact lined up with media four. You wanna make sure you're at the very beginning of this layer because that's the location where media four is the closest to our camera. We wanna highlight camera one and camera focus. Just hold down shift and you can highlight both of those. Right click and if you go to camera, you'll see where it says link focus distance to layer. So that's the trick to make this work. So we're gonna choose that. And now if you watch our focus distance, as we adjust our distance, it moves along with it. So let's try something more extreme, so maybe 500 distance and go back to our camera and we can see our camera focus in fact stayed with it. And if you zoom in over here, you can see it as well. We'll go back to 1000. And as you can see, this stays in focus and the shape layers on either side are now out of focus. So thanks Stan for showing me that trick. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this layer because this will never need to be adjusted and it's just easier if it's turned off. Change the color to none, lock it down, and then I'm going to hide it. So that way there's no chance of it getting messed up. Let's go back to one view. And the reason why I pre comp these is so that way we can easily swap out media. Let's open up media one. Now I have these images already brought in. They're social media icons. Command C, I'm gonna grab the Snapchat and drop it into media one. And we wanna make sure that it's right in the center. I'm gonna increase the scale as big as I can so that way it fits inside of the media box. We just get rid of this shape layer. And so this scale, we'll make this 1200. Okay, so now let's grab YouTube, go into media two. Make the size 1200, make sure we align it, get rid of our shape layer, and the same thing for Twitter. And the last one is Facebook. And so now if we go back out to our media carousel, we can see that it updates automatically. And as you can see, as these icons come into view, they're in focus, and then they go out of focus as they leave, and the ones also as they are coming in. So you can put whatever media you want in these media boxes. Now to make this pop a little bit more, let's just add in a quick background. So I'm just going to go layer, new solid, and we're going to throw it back here. And then let's just go to effect, generate, gradient ramp. And I'm going to kind of play with these settings here and make it a red. And then copy that red, but make it a little bit lighter. Make this a radial ramp. Again, here are expression controls for distance and rotation. And just remember, if you adjust this distance, you need to adjust your camera focus distance. And that is how you make a media carousel with expression controls. Expression controls are a huge time saver. You just have to know how and when to use them. When creating a project like this one, consider pre-comping your footage or images in case you want to swap them out later on. Pre-comping saves a ton of time with any template-like project. After Effects is simply creative logic and math. So take advantage of that fact and you'll really start to understand what's possible. I hope this helped you out. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm including the project file in the description below. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.